Blissephalon deck, but not the Blissephalon GX variant he normally favors. He will be playing, again, the slight surprise that we saw yesterday, um, he will be playing the non-GX Blissephalon with the Pidgeotto draw engine. Absolutely, yeah, this is one of those decks that really snuck up um, at one of the regional events that we had in North America, and it saw so much success because it's just a very great deck against most tag team and GX Pokemon, uh, just taking these amazing trade-offs and using that Pidgeotto engine to draw through, find all those fiery flints. It's one of those uh, decks that when it works well, it works amazing, and when it doesn't set up, it's a yikes. Yeah, it very much is, and uh, he will be up against Andressa, who will be playing Mewtwo and Mew GX. not really, not, not surprised at all, definitely one of the emerging top contenders of this new format. Yeah, and the, the list so far, it looks rather standard, a couple new additions from Cosmic Eclipse, but other than that, it looks like a nice consistent build, it's got a little bit of that tag call engine that we like seeing in this deck. Uh, so maybe a, a slightly slower variant than maybe what we saw from Rahul Reddy, but one that would probably be a tad more consistent. Yeah, exactly. You, you got the tag calls in there, you got the other one, Malanano, Don Guzma and Harlo as well, which is interesting. Not all of the tag call engine decks opt to play one of this, but in a deck like this, it could be pretty cool for just grabbing your know, Stealthy Herd, Weakness Guard Energy, and uh, your Giant Halves, uh, or even the one of Viridian Forest, which uh, Andressa plays as well. And in terms of the new attackers, one we've already seen already is that Mega Lopony and Jigglypuff GX, but Andressa is also opting to play a one of of the Charizard and Breaks in GX. Yeah, this is one that I've featured in one of my deck lists. I, I, I love playing this card. I think it's so important. If you can get this off early, it's one of the best uh, turn two attacks the game has to offer if you're using a welder along with it. Yeah, j drawing cards wins games. Do you know what's even better than drawing cards? Searching. Drawing the exact <laughs> cards you want. <laughs> Absolutely. Could not agree more. Yep. Now we see both players have put their prizes out. We are almost ready to kick off here. We interesting to see who goes first. Obviously, whoever wins the opening flip can make a big difference. And it looks like it's going to be Manuel going first. Yes, looks like it, and that's pretty important, I'd say. The, the Manuel's the one who's going to be on the clock. He needs to be able to find his Pidgeys and get these into play as fast as possible so that he's not wiped out by an Espeon and Deoxys tag team. Yeah, that's going to be one of the biggest attackers that Andres is going to want to go for early. If she can just go well to turn one, well to turn two, go for that cross division GX for 200, 200 damage or 10, 20 damage counters. Yeah. So you just knock out three Pidgeotos in one go, and from there it's so hard for the Blissephalon deck to you know, come back from that because your draw engine's gone and, exactly. your, and your free prizes are down. Yeah. <laughs> Getting through 40 cards of your deck without drawing all of them every turn gets rough. <laughs> yeah, it really does. And um, it, especially because, I mean, we've seen before, like when this card first came out, the Blissephalon, people are struggling to really build it right because, you know, you could play a more GX focused draw engine with the Dene, but then you lose a lot of the, the uptrade benefit that the deck brings. Um, but, you know, now with this Pidgeotto engine, you still have the extra draw, but you aren't giving up the extra prizes to uh, sort the of same extent they would be with other draw engines. It's what makes it so great. Absolutely. We see that Poke Gear. If this poker here were perhaps able to find a lecture, that'd be an amazing card for Manuel. Th that would be the perfect uh, card to start with, uh, so as he does indeed find a lecture. There it is. Yep, it's a, a great card to have, full art especially. Mm -hmm. Show off, uh, maybe flex for the camera a bit. <laughs> no, no kidding. So off of this, I imagine he's probably just going to grab a free Pidgey and just be done with that. Maybe one Pidgeotto as well, just so he has that guaranteed for next turn. Yeah, I, f I feel like that'd be pretty helpful for him. Maybe if he had the second lecture in hand, he could go a little more aggressive and grab all the Pidgeys. Yeah. But this probably will hint a little bit at how strong his hand is. Yeah, we'll see. I think uh, from what I saw, uh, yeah, he will be going for the two Pidgeys and the Pidgeotto yeah. just to make sure he has at least one of them ready for next turn, but right. a very strong start for Manuel. Yeah, I, I think three Pidgeotos would be fantastic bench for him. He'd be happy with that. Also gives himself a little chance to draw into some more support cards as his hand did look a little bit empty. Yeah, which is obviously not great for him. Now, I'm sure he'll be happy with this start. Oh, he has another Pidgey in hand as well. Oh, did he have a four? Yeah, no. it looks like a second Pidgeotto. So oh, that's he's got multiple Pidgeottos. Turn one attachment too. Looks like double fire crystal on the side. So yeah. hmm. it does mean that Pidge the first few Pidgeotto draws will be quite important for him. Absolutely. Uh, but he will have to be content with yeah, just another Pidgeotto on the bench. Attachment to the active in a pass. How does Andressa respond? This will be the test. Yeah. <laughs> Marshadow in the active is not typically the best for you because it means that you're going to need a switching effect if you want to get the full six energy turn two. It might not be realistic for her uh, just yet. Yeah, it's that one extra little sort of out that you need. Now, the nice thing that Andressa is doing straight away, just going for that ultra space, knowing that she can search for, I believe, the one viable target in the deck for her, which is that, of course, uh, Naganadal GX. Yeah. Just be, able, just be able to get it out of the deck straight away, and maybe if, if she can discard it, that would be really great for her. Yeah, it, it, very uh, keen from her. Even if you don't have a, an Ultra Beast, you should be using that just to search through your deck and know exactly what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. And it's an important, you know, small factor that 
you know, a lot of a lot of times some play players, when they see something like that out, they won't even think that oh, it's an opponent's stadium. I can get benefit out of it as well. But Adressa being fully aware of that and making use of it. Absolutely. That's Poker Gear. Yep. So we'll see if that one thin out was able to help her. She's looking for Welder. Don't think she found it. Oh, no. Does find a Guzman Hala, though, which could be better than nothing. Could use that to grab you know, a Giant Half, for example, or maybe even a weak discard energy and a Stealthy Hood if she thinks that's worth it with the discard. I mean, they could use it to discard an Aganado, actually, so it's not even that bad. Yeah, oh, wow. but her hand would have been amazing with a Welder. She's got three Fire Energies, that cr the sh uh, Cherish Ball as well. Wow. She might just have to dump it. Yeah, not really ideal, unfortunately. Uh, having to grab a dead energy X with this Cherish Ball that's uh, that's got a lot of fire engine gone straight away. And from looking at Andressa's list, she is only playing eight basic fire as well, which tends to be like the lowest count these muted decks can play. Yeah, it it, it becomes infinitely more harder to uh, get this attack off on the second turn if you have to dump all of those fire energies. Yeah. How many is it that she has hand is three, three, four? Oh wow! I think I saw four in hand as well. <laughs> and is she not going to attach to the active? There they go. Yeah, if you attach the active, it pretty much uh, shuts the dream down of the six energies. Yeah, I guess it does. But still, that means that's four fire energy gone <sighs> to turn one. That's so brutal. Yeah, it's really tough. Uh, I guess this sets up for um, Sogaleo to be the, the main engine to set up this Espeon Deoxys attack, but it's just a little slow. But honestly, she's looking for anything at this point. This has not been working out for her. This hand is pretty atrocious. Yeah, that is uh, <laughs> about as far from ideal as it, it can get. And... I mean, there's no draw outs in that hand either. That, how would she even work with that? Yeah, <laughs> those are a lot of specialty cards. <laughs> <laughs> they work really great when you have a full Mewtwo welder set up, but not with the Dene Marshadow. No. Uh, she has an option to take whether to take the Poke Gear or the, uh, the Dene from this, but I think considering what else she has, I think you have to take the Dene here. The Poke Gear doesn't get you anywhere. Yeah, I think she's kind of realizing that all of these specialty cards are super helpful in the mid to late game, uh, but She's just going to have to dump them as well and hopefully get there. I'm uh, curious to see that she didn't choose to attach energy for the turn. She could have played that energy on the Mars Shadow. Yeah, because yeah, it's one thing to not attach, hoping that you can start to make your way towards the Espeon Deoxys stream, but, you know, instead you of opting to just... Sorry. You also do more damage. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> It's well, yeah. an Ultra Beast. Yeah. <laughs> you could actually do some relevant damage to a Blacephalon. Okay, you do 70. That's yeah, pretty good. Get that red knuckle going. So, really interesting to see... Uh, her decide to not go with that. Yeah. I mean, one option she could have gone for last turn, she did have the Espeon Deoxys in hand. She could have maybe just played the Guzman Hala and then just you know, sit on that, get get some stuff. Attached to it. Yeah. It can it can play Pokemon. Yeah, it exactly. doesn't always have to be a Mewtwo. No, exactly. I mean, it is a basic. You don't have to... It's not <laughs> something that you have to copy with Mewtwo. Right. No, I agree. Either way, this is the option she's gone for. And, uh, yeah, sadly, things not really working out for her. Now, back to Manuel's turn, as we see him doing, I believe, a acrobatic... Oh, an airmail decision. And was that the welder he took? Yeah, he doesn't have any fire energies. He has two crystals. Maybe oh. if he could find a fiery flint, he'd be in an amazing spot. But yeah, he's just going to keep going airmail, airmail, Pidgeotto airmail. I mean, this is pretty strong, right? Free Pidgeotto that's, turn two. That's <laughs> not a bad start at all. Yeah, there's another fire energy. Oh, beautiful. So this fire energy does allow uh, him to potentially have an attack this turn if he does draw into another one with his welder. Yeah, and it also gives him an extra draw as well because obviously the welder will let him actually draw cards. So yeah. a very important find. I think he's having to make a little bit of a decision as to whether... Oh, he just opts to attach it manually. I, yeah, I I don't disagree with this play. He can kind of go slow. He's just going to blaze her and take yeah. some time. It's it's a Marsh Shadow that didn't put pressure on you, so might as well just wait. Uh, you're probably going to get Whoa. most of your attacks off yeah. into Mewtwo's. Exactly. There's a big draw from Andrea, so she does draw the Mewtwo and MewGX, can finally commit an energy to that. And she's got an energy recycle system as well. That's very important. Yeah, so now we're really going to see if she wants to use that Sogaleo or if she wants to use... Um, the welders as her main engine because yeah. she can put all of these energies back in. Actually, I guess this is pretty fair either way because she has at least one energy in the discard pile still after discarding four. So yeah. when this di Solgaleo does hit the discard pile, she can still turbo at least one energy. Yeah, so uh, I think as long as she hits like, one switch out and obviously the welder of fire energy should, should be in relatively good stead. If she can find obviously a way to discard a second energy, that would be even better. But this is, things are now looking a lot more workable for Andressa. That was a very important top deck. And the of course, is ready in her hand as well, so that would be very nice to discard off the Dedene. Absolutely. Yeah, we're going to see that Dedene come down. Dedene change, gets played. Six drawn for Andressa. Ooh, mm, that's not Ooh. really what you want. <laughs> there's, a, there's a switching out, but not really... Yeah, no welder. No welder, just... She got two out of three, essentially. She's got the giant half, she's got the switching out, but no way to actually attach him with the welder. 
So she's uh, she can clear vision or she can pass. <laughs> I'm gonna vote pass. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fair play. <laughs> Well, you know, maybe there's a surprise heat round from somewhere. There you Stop go. That, but, uh, Let's shut that down right now. Yeah. And our, and our SV on the Oxus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A surprise heat round, which actually Manuel doesn't even play. So <laughs> ignore me completely. <laughs> uh, who needs GX Pokemon? Yeah. We've, we've learned <laughs> many times on this stream that they're overrated. Yeah. Not the least which uh, in, in the last round. <laughs> <laughs> right. So... Um, Manuel has gone for going for yet another airmail here. He finds <sighs> Welder, but this is, it's beautiful. He, all he can find is Welder, and yeah. <laughs> and Atris, all she can find are energies. <laughs> Maybe it's a combined forces. You know? Exactly. <laughs> yep. All right. I think you have to take that fire energy, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> Three crystals is doing you no good. No. Oh, beautiful. Found another fire energy to go with yeah. it. Yeah. This is already looking a lot better then. So now not only can he actually uh, attach to attack, but he's got some damage going too. He's actually got the other two Blacephalons in hand as well, interestingly enough. Opting to hold on to them both for now. Probably worried about, you know, just keeping a bench slot free just in case. Yeah, sure. Um, curious to see if he chooses to welder two energies onto the bench or one to the active. That's like the answer is one to the active just to see him some more cards. Oh, Fiery Flint's a huge pickup. Yeah, that's a pretty great card for him, especially with both of those crystals in hand. That means he's going to have access to plenty of energies throughout the course of this game. Also, hit two amazing cards to discard. <laughs> Who needs lectures at this point? <laughs> yeah, that, that is uh, really, really solid. So it's, it's always a great feeling when you you know, you know play like a card which you know, discards cards as a cost, but then both the cards you discard are beneficial in every way possible. Right. Trading Bridgets. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> the dream. Yeah, or I guess now in a Mewtwo, like great catching away GXs as well. Yes. So same, same sort of thing. <laughs> So there's a manual attachment onto the bench with Cephalon. Not, of course, needing that many energy to KO the Marsh Shadow. The Fire Flint will easily get in there, as he does. Oh, he may be considered discarding some, not the lecture. What was it a card he discarded? Looks like he threw in Ultra Space. Uh, it's n nearly as irrelevant. Yeah. No, so I, I, you could use it as a counter stadium against uh, Giant Hearth. Maybe you could get your effect out of that Giant Hearth and then counter stadium. So. Yeah. Maybe he's just thinking on an off turn where I'm not using Welder, I'll play Lecture, get, grab my last Pidgeotto, and that will help me thin out just a little bit more. That makes a lot of sense, especially actually, especially considering he's already got all four of his Blissathlons out, so the Ultra Space is completely dead to yeah. him at this point. Well, I think this is a safe bet, grabbing all these Fire Energies here now. You saw that your opponent had to discard a Reset Stamp, and Mewtwo generally can't afford to play more than one or two. Yep. So. And there is Fireball Circus, 2 energy hit the discard, 100 damage, that's a knockout on the Marsh Shadow, and first prize goes to Manuel. And this works out pretty great for Manuel. He knows now all he has to do is knock out a tag team, great catcher at Dedenne, and this game is over. Yeah, the maps works out very nicely. The prizes are mapped out for him to take this first game. So now it's going to be on Andressa to see if she can just mount some kind of uh, response quickly enough before Manuel can overwhelm her. I think all of this relies on Turbo Strike. Uh, she will need to find another Mewtwo and get these energies into play. She needs a Welder so that she can get some relevant energies onto that benched Mewtwo. And once this active Mewtwo falls, she's going to need that one to go in. Yeah, so there we go with the uh, Dedenne. Okay. Okay. Oh. Close. What? Acrobike needs to find a, a Fire Energy would be amazing. Wait, hold on. Did she have the giant half in hand and not play it, or was it just another card and we misread what it was? Because surely if it's a giant half, you play it, right? Yeah, I don't know if she was uh, afraid of giving Manuel a little extra fuel. Oh, that's a good point, actually. It'll make the KO a lot easier for him. Right. Well, now she finds all the welders. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that seems to how, that's how it goes on this stream. Yeah. All or nothing. Yeah, if she could just find just one fire energy from that, she'd be absolutely golden. But as it sounds right now, uh, Welder for one and onto. And she doesn't have. Oh, she's had the Mewtwo. Okay, I was going to say she doesn't have a good target, but she does at least. Yep. It's better than nothing. There's the Welder. Three cards drawn. And actually, this, this turn is not that bad, to be honest. She's going to get the KO at least. Right. So now the important piece is does she have two energies in the discard pile? If she does, then that means that there's still hope for the dream of Mewtwo taking uh, the six energy knockout yep. soon. Uh, there's one psychic. And uh, yeah, yes. one fire. Okay. okay. Yes, that definitely is super, super helpful here. Turbo strike, especially because especially that one of them is a psychic energy as well. Because I believe if I check the deck list that she only plays two. Yes, she does. That's actually really important. <laughs> yeah, w when you start to add in the Greninja into this deck list and you add the water energies, uh, you really don't leave many much room for the psychic. And yeah. Finding that psychic is very important. It really is. So Andressa gets a really, really 
useful and helpful turbo strike. Gets her first knockout of the game. Back on Manuel now as he needs to find well of his own two energies and then six energies in hand to get the KO. It's a lot to ask, but it's not impossible. Yeah, uh, he did play that fiery flint. We know he does have a welder in hand, as, so um, access to more energies in the discard pile by use of those uh, crystals. I feel like he definitely should have some way to find this. You would think so, wouldn't you? Especially with three more airmails as well. There's the two energy for... Oh, that's, I did not know that he played Poké Doll. That's wow. super interesting. That's why he'd been leaving that bench space open, I suppose. Yeah, I guess so. Just um, well, yeah, one of those cards, I guess, that can just buy you a couple of turns. It right? completely buys you a turn yeah. in almost every scenario, unless your opponent's playing a Fionn. Like, they, they can't great gear catcher these non-GX Pokemon. No, exactly. That's actually really clever. And, oh, well, to enter Fire Crystal as well. Yeah, he's surely he's got the KO at this point. Yeah, there are two Fires in hand, three Crystals in hand, and we know at least four energies are in the discard, I believe. Yeah, I think uh, I just that. Just make sure that Manuel didn't draw too much off of the welder. No, he, he didn't. And oh yeah, there's, there's plenty yeah, of energy in there. Yeah, I think that's looked like five or so. So Manuel's got the KO here. He's going to go down to two prizes left. And basically, if Andressa doesn't now find this, um, you know, combo to get the Espeon Deoxys for 20 damage counters, I think that Manuel's in pretty good shape to win this game. There's a curious decision that Manuel has. I believe he's holding Great Catcher. He could choose to knock out the the benched Mewtwo with three energies, it would mean that he wouldn't have win in hand, but that really just depends on if he believes he's going to have a reset stamp happen to him, because if a six energy take out all your Pidgeotos and reset stamp happens, he pretty much is in a horrible place, but if you take out the three energies now, there's no way that the Espeon Deoxys clears your board. Yeah, exactly, that's such a very important to, for him to think about, and I'm sure that will be going through his mind as he takes goes through the rest of his turn. Now, he does have another Blacephalon there, so that's good. He's got a backup attacker at least, attaches manually to it as well. Um, and now just making sure that he has got enough in there. Yeah, there's the six, so he's got enough for Fireball Circus KO, and it's now just going to be this decision. Like you said, does he KO the active or not? He does. Yeah, I mean, this, this is a play that will reward him if he doesn't get reset stamped. He does have access um, to that great catcher to knock out to Dene on the following turn. However, if and just that hits everything. I believe he put himself in a, a pretty difficult spot to come back. Very much so. Now, does Andressa find the reset stamp? If if she does, then she'll be in a very good position to make a combat. But if she doesn't, then Manuel has everything he needs ready to go. So it's all going to come down to this, really. Okay. And here comes the poker gear. Oh. Does <laughs> well, we know reset stamps in the deck. Okay, that, yeah, that's a good start. But no welder is very brutal. Yeah, she had to discard one off of an acro bike earlier as well, so not really ideal. And um, the, the Dene isn't even an option as well because Andressa says is only playing free, not the four we sometimes see. So she can't even do like another dig with a Dene to get it either. Yeah, certainly makes things difficult. Does have Welder in hand, but I believe she does want one more fire energy. She's not going to have access to it, so that means that the Espeon Deoxys for six energy will not be happening this turn. No, and uh, that is really unfortunate. That's really what she needed to do if she wanted to get Matt to come back, but I think Welder for one energy is just not going to get her there. Yep, can't find the reset stamp either. Oh, no. Yeah, I think, I think that has unfortunately sealed it for in Manuel's favor here. No reset stamp, no Espeon Deoxys attack. I, I really don't see a way for Andressa to come back into the game at this point. Um, low punny sleep flip? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time we've seen it in this over this weekend. I, 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 don't, I don't think there's any other way out of this. No. You need more time, but then you <laughs> use your GX attack. And yeah, it's, oh. It's, it's no matter which way you look at it, it is just extremely ugly. She's looking for a discard pile as well, just to see if there's anything else she might be missing. But no, uh, I think just the fact that the welder was only one energy just kind of seals it uh, there. And you know, just a manual reminding her to put the welder back in the discard pile. But I mean, oh, she just ends up grabbing another Mewtwo as well. So it looks like she doesn't even think that the Mega Low Pony and Jigglypuff's worth it. Yeah, this is going to be Turbo Strike and Prey. She yeah. really doesn't want to see Manuel uh, holding on to welder, fiery, uh, and uh, fire crystals, but. Uh, I believe we know the writing is pretty much on the wall. Yeah. Water energy attachment onto the Mewtwo as well, just just to overnight something. There's a Turbo Strike. Fire and a Psychic goes onto the Mewtwo. Yeah. Knocks out the Active Blacephalon. One more prize taken. Pretty interesting to see the water attachment to the bench. Uh, if you if your active is knocked out, you're going to lose the game anyway. So I would pretty much always play that on the active. Yeah, just go all in pretty much. Yeah. 
No, Mana Weapon's at Pokedoll, which doesn't scream instant win. Although, actually, no, at the same time, you can just put it at the bottom of the deck. Yeah, it, you, so. it, it screams safety, <laughs> yeah. which I'm, I'm all right with. If you're going to scream anything, yeah, that's, that's fine. So there's one Fiery Flint, looks like, uh, getting the last Fire Engine from the deck. Does he have the Welder? His body language and the way he's playing fast tells me he probably does, or if not, then he's pretty likely to hit it off an airmail, which is he's not used any of his airmails yet. Right. Oh, he does have Welder. So it's just going to be after if he can find enough energy to discard. Oh, there's a Fire Crystal. Wait, would he just win with Big Teeny right now? Oh, that's a good point, actually. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Uh, I guess he knows that he has definitive win with Blacephalon, so he's just going to go for that instead. Yep. Well, they're on to the Blacephalon 1, 2, 3. That's I see four, and I know there's a great catcher. That's the Dene knockout. Yeah, that is. That will be the game. So great catcher gets played, uh, discarding whatever, bring up the Dene. The Lily's Poker Doll ability to put itself to the bottom <laughs> of the deck. <laughs> and uh, there goes the Fireball Circus for the knockout on the Dene for Manuel to take the last two prizes and take game one. Wow, beautiful. Perfectly executed by Manuel. He was able to get everything he needed. Going first was also super important for him. Bought him so much time. And we really just didn't see anything happen on the other side. Uh, Andresa just didn't find the cards that she needed, wasn't able to get those welders going. And uh, you, you just see how this matchup can, can flip on its head. Yeah, in, in a way, the way this matchup plays out can be, I think, quite similar to how Mewtwo matchup plays up out against uh, Malamar, if you're, say, if you're not playing, like, you know, the Lysander Labs build, but so where if you just don't find the Espeon Deoxys attack for, two, for 20 damage counts early enough, they can just overwhelm your single-prize attackers, and you're trading so unfavorably. Yeah, 50 and 60 hit point Pokemon. If you are if you knock out three of those on the first on the second turn with your Espeon Deoxys, you probably win that game. <laughs> yeah, you probably and do. I know uh, Andres is probably thinking to herself, all right, uh, didn't work that time, but I know my deck is, a is capable of doing this. I've done this a thousand times in testing before. Now we just need to see if I'm able to find those welders at the right time. Yeah, exactly. And not only that, of course, she will be going first in this game, so she has more turns to try and dig for that and to really just put her on Manuel before he can to get anything set up at all. Sure. Well, only 20 minutes have passed, so uh, plenty of time for both these players to give us game two, potentially game three. And uh, we know that this matchup is um, pretty volatile either way, so uh, sheer aggression out of both players we could see game three with plenty of time. Yeah. So looking a little bit further ahead to Kyle, when you see you know, like, like you know, Blacephalon being played, I think there are only like one or two here in day two. Yeah. How how likely do you, do you see it to make actually deep run and potentially make it into top eight? How well positioned do you think it is in this current field of day two that we have? I, I think it has pretty fair matchups against a lot of tag team decks besides the Mewtwo, but obviously we've seen that it's able to beat the Mewtwo if the Mewtwo doesn't find exactly what it needs. Yeah. So uh, putting yourself in a position where you're playing a fairly consistent deck and you're able to always have game against a bunch of different decks it's the ultimate 50 50 deck and it just means that you can put yourself in positions to always at least have an opportunity in these games yeah so i feel like he, he's in a fairly great spot to continue on and po possibly make top eight yeah i completely agree now just a quick note there we did see the prizes get put out on uh, andres side and she has prized her solgaleo gx that is really not something you want to prize against uh, this, this deck that's why tord plays too <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, arguably one of the most important attackers that you copy in this deck, just because early on, just setting up your energies onto your bench Mewtwo's and doing a solid damage at the same time is so, so strong. Yeah, it, it's the perfect attack against this, Pidge uh, this Pidgeotto Blacephalon deck yeah. uh, if you aren't using the Espeon Deoxys immediately. Yeah, and uh, meanwhile, from Manuel's side, two Fire Crystal Surprise is not actually that fun. That's going to make it harder for him to dig for those big knockouts on the Mewtwo's and Mews, but with any luck for him, maybe he'll be able to pick those out before that becomes an issue. Yeah, I'm a big fan of prize placement and if you draw from the bottom those are actually in the perfect spot yeah <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna be drawing into them after you've most likely discarded a lot of fire energies and you're looking for a little more firepower so i would i would argue those prizes are actually pretty good <laughs> that's a very fair point now as we go into this game two again with uh andressa going first having lost uh, game one starting off with an acrobat and a tag call so already looking a lot better that is perfect yeah this is exactly where you want to be if you're andressa these cards are going to help you out in finding everything that you need finding these pokemon uh, she is going to learn the uh, difficult news that Sogaleo is not there. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be pretty brutal. It's going to make it extra important for her to find this Welder turn one just so that she can you know, put out at least the threat of this uh, Espeon and Deoxys GX. Certainly. Now, it'd be interesting to see actually what she gets off of this tag call, I believe. That's uh, some Rainbow Rare. I'm not sure which <laughs> one, actually. That might be the the Breaks well, and Charizard, actually. Okay, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, because I don't believe... Yeah, she's not playing Reshiram and Charizard, so I think that's the only... Yeah, let's let's see what. Maybe it's the Mega Low Pony. I don't know. I guess it's yeah, it's the breaks. In it is it. Okay, cool. Very cool. That's an expensive card. <laughs> yes, that is a very. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna bring out my trade binder after this. <laughs> 
Well, I mean, if it ends up uh, winning, winning at this game, I think she might be a little bit reluctant. <laughs> yeah, I might have to pay a little more than market value. Yeah. Anyway, so now the she ends up finding the Espion Deoxys and the Breaks and Charizard off of uh, off of this. So two very good tag teams to discard of here. Weakness guard energy onto the active. And does have Dedene, does have a Viridian, chooses to go with a Viridian. Uh, sh uh, she's very aware that Giant Hearth is amazing for her opponent. Yeah. So she's continually been going with these uh, safer approaches. Does not yeah. get punished this time, was able to find one fire energy. That means the Viridian can find her the second yeah. one. Yeah, and I think that, that that's a fair enough risk to take, right? She knows that, right, if uh, Mano gets access to too many fire energy, it's going to make the chaos on my Mewtwo's very easy. So sure. like the chances of me drawing just one fire with the Viridian is absolutely fine. What's... Is Manuel asking about Might something? be asking about what the attack does. Oh, because it's, it's probably going to be in Portuguese, isn't sure, it? Sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Manuel might want to get a translation on that just uh, so that he knows what it does. Or he's trying to trade for it. <laughs> in the middle of a game. Yeah. But how much? <laughs> <laughs> Is, um, just explaining the card, I'm sure. Yeah. It's <laughs> it is a beautiful card. Yeah, it, I, it is. I, I'm... If you if you do need to take a thirty second break in the middle of one of the most important games of your life, it's for breaks in for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, yeah, now that's uh, been been clarified. Now uh, Manuel knows ex exactly what it does. So here goes the Cherish Ball, and uh, I imagine that Andressa will probably want to find either did anything next turn or if not, maybe some kind of backup attacker. Sure. She also is. Definitely going to be using that Viridian Forest this turn, and Understand. she would love for it to stick for just one more turn because she wants to find that psychic energy. It's super yeah. important for her. Yeah, she's probably looking for and just like, again to realizing, well, Solgaleo is Where not an option you? here. <laughs> that, that is, that is, literally, in any other circumstance, that would be the perfect thing to, dis to discard. Ninja. I mean, it's probably the best option for her at this point, right? It just does a solid 130 damage. I mean, the the Charizard GX 300 damage GX stack isn't really it's a, you know, it's completely, it's way too much. To, yeah. You don't never need that amount of damage to KO anything. So yeah, I think the Greninja actually is just the best option to discard off the Viridian. Yeah, just put it away. Maybe you find that water energy <laughs> yeah, and maybe. do some work later. Who knows? She, she could even maybe consider keeping it in her hand to like play the rest of her hand now and use that elusive master ability. Put the Greninja on the bench, draw free cards. Yeah, I was <laughs> looking at her hand. I'm like, oh, she has two welders. Yes, <laughs> that's, that's not happening anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, 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 it's, a, it's a fun thought, though. So. It would have been, yeah, it would have been beautiful. Yeah. I think the thing, the thing that does matter the most, of course, is that she does have that welder with the two fire energies, so this is an immensely stronger start than she had in game one. Absolutely. One, two, and three. Oh, and she finds a dead ending as well. Yeah, she is sorted, absolutely sorted. Yep. Does also have, um, I believe she had a giant hearth. Yeah, she has yeah. giant hearth. So she does. following turn, she could, if this stadium sticks, find psychic. Use Giant Hearth, find two fires, welder, and then all you need is SBN Deoxys, and you're running over Pidgeys. Uh, she, I think she already has in discard, remember? She got it off the tag called turn one. Yeah, oh, so beautiful. Yeah, yeah <laughs> she's, she's completely set up from this point, but she just does not want to see this stadium get countered. So, on to Manuel now, as he has a look through with, I believe, was that a... What actually was that that he used? Oh, it's a Viridian Forest. Oh, so, so he discarded a fire energy with Viridian, just to have to, again, that first look through, grab a fire energy, and see what he has access to. Very good. Thinning out before using your Stellar Wish, always important. Give yourself better odds, even if it's half a percent. Do what you have to do. And he's uh, going to want to make sure that you find something else to Stellar Wish. Uh, it might be especially important. Let's have a look at his hand to see what is he's working with. Oh, it's that's not. Yikes. Yeah, that's not great. He might actually have to weld it to this uh, Jirachi, <laughs> which would be far from ideal. Yeah, this Jirachi is definitely looking for a lecture, and Andres is thinking, yeah, find lecture. Yeah. <laughs> Please. Does he find it? No, no. Poker doll. So, um, yeah, it's, that's, that's gonna have to be a welder to the Jirachi to draw free cards. Yeah, and if welder doesn't find anything, we're going to game three. Does well if Angela finds the psychic energy. Yeah, if the if the stadium's not countered. Yeah. So welder, if welder completely blanks. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course, because it means that the psychic energy is guaranteed. Yeah. It's silly me. So yeah, well done to the active. Does Manuel find anything? Oh, is that lecture? But yeah, but for next but it's, turn. Yeah, it's too late. No! And, and, and he's not, not going to cancel it. The game's over. That's it. Like, yeah. Well, All right. So, Andressa, all she needs to do is, yeah, use the Viridian, grab the Psychic, replace it with the half, get the two fire energy yeah, welder, and that's it. She's just going to confirm SVN Deoxys is in the discard pile. Yeah. She's getting herself ready. Yeah, she knows ready it's is. lined up. Yep, Viridian. Discards the Naganadal GX. Finds a Psychic. There we go. 
Cross Division GX for six energies will be 20 damage counters onto this board. Manuel knows what's happening here. Yeah. He's seen this before. It is his nightmare. He knows that this game is going to be over very shortly. Yeah, so... Uh, uh, wait, what? Uh, <laughs> that's not how that works, is no, it? I... What? What just happened there? Did... Uh... Okay. 3-7, all right, sure yeah. that works too. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course, it's 3-7, it's free, it's free yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. <laughs> Didn't even need the... Why did you have the giant half off of the... I, 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 yeah, I saw off. a welder pop out and I didn't know what what was happening there, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, oh, yeah. I guess it didn't matter. Oh, yeah, all, she needed was, all she needed was the psychic and she did that cross vision for 3 and 10. Goodness. So 3 and 7 even, so... That's well, why not do 20? Give me 20. Yeah, exactly. Just flex <laughs> on us for a little exactly. bit. Especially because she could have done it. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> you, when you have it, have it show it. Yeah. She didn't want She didn't want to make him feel bad. She'd have to put all the extra damage counters down. It would have been a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, we are now into game three, and again, this is showing the power of Mewtwo Mew GX. You know, just being able to, I think especially when this deck first broke out of the scene, it was really the inclusion of the Espeon Deoxys as an attacking option that really set it apart and uh, took it to the next level. Yeah. Just uh, being able to disrupt setups, especially of the sort of evolving basic decks, is uh, just way, way too strong. Yeah, uh, when you're playing against... I mean, you want to have every answer available to you when you're playing that Mewtwo deck, and yeah. um, we, we, we've seen that she's given herself pretty much every single option that she can afford while not sacrificing too much consistency. And when you keep that um, that Espeon Deoxys, you're opening up so many matchups to be successful. All of the Pidgey decks, if you're ever even playing against that Pidgeotto stall deck, uh, it's phenomenal against that deck if you just wipe out their board. There's absolutely nothing that they can do. Yeah, because very similarly with Manuel. Yeah, they're just so reliant on that ML to, to go dig through the deck and do all the things they need to do. And as soon as that all goes, it's like, well, I'm drawing one card a turn. I'm not going to be able to do anything relevant in the time that it takes for you to be able to attack now that I'm not drawing like resources to disrupt you. Right. Uh, this is when we, when we saw Blacephalon at the uh, North American International Championships, uh, it was a completely different deck and it was uh, able to use a lot of different cards. And this version, we didn't think would be successful until it found Pidgeotto. Yeah. And Pidgeotto Airmail opened up so many new avenues. It really did. Now, uh, in this game, of course, Manuel, having lost game two, will be able to go first, so he will ha have a distinct advantage immediately. But it, as it will depend on his turn one setup. We have seen sometimes that this uh, Blacephalon deck can just like fall victim to itself, um, you know, it just from not being able to find an enough basics on the first turn. So it'll be, yeah, just see what Manuel finds here. Has he opened? Oh, he's opened up an elf lecture. He's fine. That's beautiful. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly where you want to be. He gets to pull these Pidgeys out of his deck before using Stellar Wish. So he's going to open up plenty of avenues for him. Yeah. Oh, and, and Andressa with a really not great starter either in that Mega Low Punny and Jigglypuff GX. Not an attacker you want to use in this matchup at all. That she does 60 damage. 60. <laughs> yeah. That's, a, that's enough to take out a Pidgey. <laughs> okay. I guess, actually. That's a Stellar Wish. Looks like he's gonna find himself a oh, oh heat factory. That's yeah, good. that's good. Can get himself some extra draws off of that. Just dig through even more of his deck, and yeah, Manuel is just firing on all cylinders already. Yeah, this has been a pretty great start for him. Interesting that he chose only two Pidgeys. Maybe he does have another one in hand, or feels that he'll be able to just operate with the two for just now, or he just didn't trust the fact that his hand was going too far. He wanted to be really safe and make sure he had that Pidgeotto. Yeah, makes sense. Looks like uh, Manuel's also got an Ultra Space for next turn, so that's pretty good. If uh, He might want to keep the Heat Factory, but at the same time, finding Blacephalons is important, so at least he knows he has that option available. Yeah, it could use the Heat Factory and then Counter Stadium. Sure could. There's the pass anyway from Manuel. Sleep Flip on the Jirachi does wake up. Now onto Andressa to see how she can respond. She got, oh, she got an Acrobite, but actually I think her hand is pretty weak otherwise. Yeah, does have a Fire Energy, so she could use that Heat Factory to help she sure could. It does a very solid acrobite discarding a uh, Charizard GX. That's something you definitely want to discard straight away. Yep, does go for the Heat Factory. Draws three cards. Find a giant half. Oh, and there's the Dene. Okay. That's uh, that's important. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Especially with the rest of the hand, because the, the rest of the hand is doing nothing. I, you almost just throw it all away, right? <laughs> yeah. This is, I think she's looking to counter Stadium and go. Yep, Viridian Forest is going to come down again. Opting to play that instead of the giant half, just to make sure that Manuel doesn't get the extra... Uh, giant half value to make Welder easier. And yeah, dead a change straight away. <laughs> Credit to her sticking to her game plan. This has been working for her so far. Game yep. two was very successful. Gonna try once more. Does find a Poke Gear. 
No fire energy. I don't think I saw any energy, yeah. No. Yeah, that is a little bit unfortunate. I think it was. I think she was still right to do that, though, especially considering Manuel's going first. Oh, if you, sure. If you just give him the guaranteed two energy, all he needs is Welder, and that's, that makes it so much diffi more, more difficult to you know, prevent an attacking threat. Right. We do see a tag call, too. Um, Playing it like a poker gear. Yeah, that's not how that works. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> if if she didn't just hint that she has poker gear in hands, but I think Manuel's <laughs> catching on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She has a she has a laugh about it as well. Yeah. There is there goes the tackle in any case. So able to find find herself uh, the the Espion and Deoxys as well as uh, going to go for that uh, Brakeson and Charizard GX as well. Does she have the Mewtwo in hand already? I think she has two tackles in hand, so she might play the second one uh, to okay. grab that afterwards. And oh, she does have one in okay, hand as well. Okay, good. I was yeah. I was a little concerned. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, there goes the first tackle, grabbing those two tag team attackers. Still wants it. <laughs> he can't can't keep his hands off it. And uh, yeah, there goes tackle number two. So probably gonna grab grab herself another another Mewtwo off of this, as well as maybe can we grab two Mewtwo's even, or is it another tag team that he that she can go for? Oh, goes for the Cynthia and Caitlyn. Okay, yeah. Pretty solid. Yeah, no complaints here. That's that's a pretty fair uh, grab off a tag call, thin your deck out really well too. Does have two fire energies in the discard pile. Sogaleo in hand. Would love to find some more energies, potentially an out with Viridian to weld her one energy, find the second and a switching effect, and yes. then she could use Turbo Strike. Yeah, that, that would be the ideal turn for sure. That's very true. It's the one thing that makes you know, not finding a second energy as brutal. That this Turbo Strike is an attacking option. May not be able to accelerate any energy off it, but still just getting the damage in and getting the first knockout is important. Yeah, it, it would be a pretty wicked welder here to find switch energy, but yeah. it's certainly possible. Yeah, especially with the Sorgaleo already in the discard pile. So here we go. Andressa shuffles the deck, and we get, imagine we're going to see the Mewtwo go down. Well, I appreciate how the players are handing the decks to each other for yeah. the cut. <laughs> oh, actually, important thing, she does need to find the Welder first. Yes, we here. just assume <laughs> that it's there, but yeah. yeah, she does find two there. Yeah. Perfect. So, that, so now it is just going to come down to what she draws off of this Welder. So... Do, do you play the other Poké Gear as well, just to thin out the deck a bit more? I think I think it makes sense, right? Because yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it it depends on how um, focused you are on this turn being the most important turn, or yeah. if you're looking towards a, a later setup. So, yeah. if she thinks that this is the turn I need to have this turn one knockout, then absolutely play the gear and keep going. Yeah, and I think yeah, and that's exactly what she's thinking about right now. It does indeed opt to go for it. Now, does does she actually find a spot to two thin outs? She finds another welder. Oh, or maybe not. Oh. Or maybe she just opted not to yeah, take it. Yeah, she either chose not to do it or yeah. our eyes deceive us once again. Yeah. Either way, now it's going to go down to the most important part. Mewtwo and Mew onto the bench. Welder gets played. One energy. Big three cards. Cherish Brawl, Giant Half, and Dedenne. Those nope. aren't doing it. <laughs> no. It was a big, big miss, unfortunately. So going to have to just you know, be content to sit back and try to work out something for next turn. But that is really not ideal. Right. Now, of course, a lot of these Pokemon are going to be fantastic to discard with a Dedenne GX on the following turn. That's but very true. No energies, missing a lot of stuff. We know Manuel's likely going to be playing Ultra Space on this turn, so won't have access uh, to energies unless she plays down her Giant Hearth. And yeah. We know she doesn't want to do that. This yeah. she's, she's shown us almost all match that she is not going to play a Giant yeah. Hearth unless it wins the game. Yeah, that's, uh, there might come a certain point where you kind of have to just because you want to build yourself up to the Espeon Deoxys, you know. <laughs> maybe, maybe you know your opponent has all his energies out of his deck or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, now it's time. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, airmail number one for Manuel. Just, uh, just find himself something. Actually, actually, I'm not sure what he found off of that. He has, has got a Welder and a Fiery Flint ready in hand, as well as the Ultra Space. So I think he's just trying to decide how he wants to best approach this with the discards. And it looks like he might be opting to discard one Fire and a Fire Crystal. He's got the Pigeon in hand as well, so he can uh, bench that at some point just to get even more air mills going. Yeah, values the, the Pidgey. He's going to discard with the Viridian to spin out just a tad more. Interesting. So maybe thinking, yeah, wants to draw into non-Fire Energy things and just get that little bit of extra deck thinning going and on that same logic yeah we're going to probably see the old space so get played down now and he'll be able to use it to search out for his first placephalon yeah manuel has uh, shown that he is going to get all of this sequencing correct he has done all of this in a pretty flawless order uh, trying to make sure that he thins down as best as possible so that jirachi gives him some amazing outs 
And we know he has the Welder ready in hand. He can, you can, we know he's got the retreat guaranteed as well, as long as he doesn't Stellar Wish, because of course that fire energy is on the, on the Jirachi. But I'm sure ideally he'd like to find an escape board uh, so that he can do a Stellar Wish as well as, you know, playing down, as well as actually doing the Fireball Circus. So there's the Welder onto the Blacephalon. Three cards drawn. Whoa, those are good cards. <laughs> That's exactly what I need. Fire Flint and the escape board as well. Wow. So, so <laughs> now he can get the extra Stellar Wish uh, off of the Jirachi as well, but, but still be able to attack at the same time. But actually, actually with this, as long as he's got enough energy in deck, you should be able to get the KO on the Mega Love, honey. I, I, I don't even know if he wants it. <laughs> I, he's, he doesn't feel pressured right now. He doesn't. Uh, there, there is no 20 damage. Espeon Deoxys uh, coming down. You don't have to worry about the cross division. So maybe he just continues to sit here. The only thing that potentially threatens him right now is uh, Naganadel sniping his Blacephalon. But other than that, I mean, that looks pretty far off too. <laughs> I, don't, I can't think of much else reason to go in now. Yeah, no, no, that's very fair. I think, I think literally it might just be a matter of, okay, I want to take a risk and win quickly. You know, sure. there, there are, you know, 11 minutes left on the clock. If he just takes these few prizes now, then another tag team knockout is all he needs to win the game. Yeah, blood in the water. Yeah. Your opponent really hasn't done much. You can get yourself on a two-turn clock. Yeah, Espe yeah especially considering that um, he's drawn the escape board, so he knows even if the Blacephalon gets knocked out, you'll have something that he can, you know, bring up, use Stellar Wish again, and dig for another Blacephalon to take the follow-up knockout next turn. Sure. Oh, actually, but it does opt to just not Stellar Wish, interestingly enough. Just goes for the manual retreat. Maybe because he wants to get the fire engine discard. Yeah. So there goes the fire crystal. Going to get free energy back. Yeah, this is very aggressive. Going to use that fireball circus for 300, uh, 250. Should be plenty there. Yeah, because the Megalopony has 240 40. AP. Yeah, yeah, so only five energies needed to be discarded there. And by, like you mentioned at the beginning of the game, Kyle, just pick up the fire crystals and the prizes. It's like he knew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He, I mean, it, he certainly could. He could look through his deck, know his counts, and say, I have a 50% chance of hitting some pretty amazing cards to help fire energies yeah. get and, a man. And uh, quite interestingly as well, he actually opted to keep the skateboard in his hand, maybe sort of making his board look more appealing to Andres than it actually is, so that he can just like slam down that skateboard and do this you know, crazy play to knock out the Mewtwo and Mew for the win. Right. Uh, he also has the... Uh, the the doll that he could use as a retreating option as well. That's very true, yeah. So he's, he's safe either way. Sure. I, I believe the most important key here is going to be Andres uh, finding herself that reset stamp. Yeah, she, she needs to find it this turn, otherwise she loses at this point. Because we know that there's, like you, like you already said, there's no threat of a, a Espeon and Deoxys doing 200 at this point, so it's really just going to be a matter of you know, how she can you know, mount a response to this, and it's going to have to be via that reset stamp. Otherwise, Manuel has way too many resources to work with. Macargo. <laughs> that, not really. Yeah, it doesn't really let's, uh, let's discard five cards <laughs> while hey, we're at it. Hey, man. Uh, Burning Magma GX is like a very strong attack. Like, on, I've... Um, I have won games off the back of the Burning Magma GX. I've, <laughs> I've done, I did it at a League Cup and uh, <laughs> scarred one of my good buddies. <laughs> Is, it, is, is he? Is your buddy still reeling? Really now, just gonna <laughs> like <laughs> nightmare flashbacks. He had nine energies on a Blacephalon board, and I discarded his whole deck. And he's like, "Oh, yeah, that's a way to lose." So, so Andressa's deck is kind of thin at this point. So, as long as she can find some kind of draw out, which obviously she does have with the, with the DNA, she's not. Is it shouldn't be too hard for her to hit that reset stamp, but it is going to be very important for her to do so. She is playing two copies of it as well, but one of them is in her prizes, so she needs to. She only has one in the deck that she can find. Here we go. Big dead a change here. Two, four, six. No, oh. that's a miss. And there's. Uh, I, don't, I was going to say there's no extra drawouts either, but I guess she can energy recycle system of fire and then welder to try and dig again. Yeah, gonna Which use the gear now. Oh, oh no, she doesn't even find a welder off the pokey mm. gear. <laughs> oh no. Oh, two energies turn two for a Mewtwo is not where you want to be. No, and it, this is again showing the uptrade power of uh, Blacephal in this single prize Pokemon that can just do one hit knockouts on tag teams. It's just, it, it, if you don't get that early Espeon and Deoxys, I, I think yeah, the, the Blacephal deck is so favored in this matchup, to be honest. Do you turbo Strike to Latios? <laughs> <laughs> What's left? Uh, uh, nothing. Kyle. I don't. I don't want to put these energies on a Dedenne. No. <laughs> no one wants to ever put energies on a, on a Dedenne. Are there any? Oh yeah, they got two fires. 
Oh, yeah, but it's just so awkward. Where do you I put mean, these? I mean, Latio seems like the best attacker of the three. You're, you're still using a, a two-prize Pokemon when your opponent has three. Yeah, but, but I mean, also, Andressa's not been able to find reset stamp. She's going to announce Turbo Strike here. Manuel's just going to get a billion energy in his hand and <laughs> announce Fireball Circus for the KO. Yep, he will have to put everything down. He needs the Blacephalon Welder. We know he's got the fires. And we know he's got the Blacephalon, too, because the Ultra Pace hasn't been countered either. So. Yeah. Does have another Pidgeotto as well, so uh, it certainly just looks like Manuel should be able to put this together. It's just a big oof for uh, Andressa all around. <laughs> Can she afford to use a switch and hide and hope that Great Catcher is lost for a turn? I guess. No, no. Oh, actually, just just goes for. There we go. <laughs> just is that, Greninja is 130. Miss Slash, I believe. Yeah. Is, is that name? 130. Just goes through any effects on the defending Pokemon. Does take the knockout. Maybe opted to do that just because, yeah, she didn't want to attach the energy to anything. All right, so we see Welder, Ultra Space has Blacephalon. Fiery Flint can grab four energies. Fire Crystal can grab a few more. Yeah, it, he, I think that he's getting there. Yeah, he just he needs, what, nine energy total, right? Three to attach to the Blacephalon, yep. and then uh, six to discard from the Fireball Circus. So can he find it? He's going to count the energies while he's in here. I believe we saw three so he could flint into one, two, three, four energies. Wow, okay. He, surely, surely he has it, right? As long as he's got the welder. Yeah, I, I think all he needs is the fodder from Pidgeotto's to help with the fiery flint. Right, okay, that makes uh, sense. It depends how he chooses to go about the airmail selection. Yeah. He'll be doing the maps in his head Even right then, now. three. He's got eight energies in hand. He's going to play f five and the Welder, so if Welder and Pidgeys find him one effect that finds energy, he wins the game. Yeah, so he's obviously doing it this way around just to make sure that he's more likely to draw those out by fitting all the fire energy out of his deck. Sure. Because now he's got, I think he might actually need to, because he doesn't have Welder in his hand already, does he? So he needs to find that up I believe now. he does have he it. Does? Yeah, it's the last card in the hand. Oh yeah, he does, okay, yeah. So I, I think he's got it with the Fire Crystal, I think he's got it now. Yeah, Welder, two fire onto the Blacephalon. Draw three cards. Find, oh, and finds Fire Crystal, yeah. He's there. Game over, man. Game over. <laughs> <laughs> Run away. <laughs> to the bottom of the deck we go. Yeah. There comes the, the Cephalon to the active. Fire right. Crystal picks up three fires from the discard. And that is all she wrote as Fireball Circus gets announced for 300 damage, knocking out the Mewtwo Mew tag team, taking the game and taking the match for Manuel. Wow. Beautifully done. Both players really put on a pretty great show for us. Uh, unfortunate for Andresa, she was not able to find the right cards at the right time. Game two was really her game. She she let it all go, and uh, we we could see we, we see how much of a glass cannon um, the, the deck is on the other side. It's unfortunate when you lose on the second turn, but man, uh, when it works, it works. Yeah, it really does, and I'm I'm sure that. Manuel doing that a lot is one of the reasons why he's been on such a good record so far and how he's been able to you know, make it all the way through his day two. And you can see he is absolutely jubilant. He's like loving, loving the fact that he was able to get this win here 